How y'all doing, ladies and gentlemen? This is Akeem Richens, better known as A. Rich from the Blueprint Podcast. And I must say, if you're really interested in having your own podcast, Anchor is definitely the way to go. It's the easiest way to make a podcast. It gives you everything you need in one place. And guess what? It's all for free. You can easily make money from your own podcast. Just download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Once again, this is Akeem Richens. If you don't know me, get to know me and get the Anchor app. Yes, yes, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. You're now listening to The Blueprint. I'm your host, A. Rich, Akeem Richens. And if you're not accustomed to the saying by now, if you don't know me, get to know me. Episode 3 of The Blueprint. If you heard the prior two podcasts, I really appreciate the listen. And I hope you continue to listen and continue to get other people to listen as this blueprint continues to grow and manifest itself. But I have to get right into it. I think it's I think I can do that now. I'm I'm three episodes in. I don't have to talk about my ventures anymore. Remember right? <laughs> Getting right into it. I think it's necessary today to discuss the rest of the AFC East. I know. We've been talking about the Buffalo Bills a lot, and of course, it's the blueprint. It's the home of the Buffalo Bills and Buffalo Bills fans. But we have opponents that we have to face every year. We are in a division that can try to improve themselves every offseason, and this offseason is no different. While we was trying to improve ourselves and our organization and our franchise, uh, to to try to take the next step to becoming a playoff perennial contending team for years to come. Other teams within the AFC, other teams within our division was doing the same thing as well. Am I right? Starting with the New England Patriots, the world champions. We all know that the New England Patriots is the most dominant team in the NFL and right now the New England Patriots in my opinion is the most dominant team in sports period I mean we can talk about the New York Yankees and their 20 some odd championships but the New York Yankees haven't been winning championships as of late <laughs> the, I'm sorry Yankee fans I know I know I'm a Mets guy I'm a Mets fan and y'all could get at me but the realistic matter of the issue is that is the truth. The Yankee fans, the Yankee organization, as uh, uh, prestigious as they are, they haven't been winning as of late. And the New England Patriots, every couple of years, they always find a way to hoist that Lombardi trophy. And until Bill Belichick or Tom Brady and or Tom Brady dismiss themselves through retirement through an unhealthy relationship and they can't stand each other anymore until this team this dynamic duel this this uh generational talent of a of a duo dismiss and disperse from each other i have to continue to think that they're going to dominate not only the afc east but the rest of the NFL as well is, is Bill Belichick, is Tom Brady. It doesn't matter about anything else with the New England Patriots, right? <laughs> it doesn't really matter what bad moves they made during the offseason. It doesn't matter what bad trades they made. It doesn't matter who they overpaid. It doesn't matter who they let go. It doesn't matter who they drafted. I haven't seen... And God knows how long. I don't know if I've ever seen the New England Patriots winning any type of NFL draft. I don't, I don't remember seeing anything about the New, York, New England Patriots having sustainable success when it comes to drafting players. Matter of fact, I believe the New York, uh, excuse me, the New England Patriots don't have a great draft history. And it doesn't get talked about. Why? Bill Belichick <laughs> and Tom Brady is the reason why, is the organizational train, is what keeps that organizational functional and flowing. It doesn't matter who is there as coaching staffs around the coaching tree. You notice other guys 
that comes from the New England Patriot brass, the New England Patriot coaching tree, and then they leave because of the success of the organization. They're going to get, they're going to get uh, the, the, the grunt of the, of the exposure because of the position that's probably having success, like a Matt Patricia or Josh McDaniels the first time when he went to Denver. They become head coaches and they leave that organization and they're not as strong. They struggle. They get fired as head coaches like Josh McDaniels. They struggle like Matt Patricia with the Detroit Lions. It is not a coincidence. (laughs) It is because of the brilliance of Bill Belichick, Tom Brady, and how that organization is, is functioned. And this is the exact reason why a guy like Josh McDaniels do not want to go anywhere. This is why Josh McDaniels is really smarter than the rest of the NFL. And instead of taking advantage of the NFL, no disrespect to Josh Daniels. I'm pretty sure he's, he's groomed and grown a lot since his first experience as a head coach when he drafted Tim Tebow with the Denver Broncos. I'm pretty sure he's grown a lot. But him himself knows that he cannot go anywhere. I am not leaving this organization until I'm in the best spot possible because I know that this organization is, even though I'm the offensive coordinator, (laughs) even though I'm calling plays and making things happen, I am an integral part to the organization right now. I know that uh, I have to be in a great situation to leave the New England Patriots. Otherwise, if I leave here again and I'm not successful on my second stint as a head coach, what is going to happen to the rest of my future? And I think Josh McDaniels is a very smart man for staying with the New England uh, Patriots organization for that reason. He knows what the rest of the NFL is not even hip to yet. But once again, the Patriots is the Patriots. Moving on, Miami Dolphins. Miami Dolphins is is an uh, a rebuilding roster, a rebuilding organization, a rebuilding franchise. They have fired Adam Gase. Look at this Adam Gase effect. Doesn't Adam Gase have a tremendous effect on the AFC? Doesn't he? We're talking about a guy that was the head coach with the Miami Dolphins, got the head coaching gig after having a successful season with the Chicago Bears, uh, Jay Cutler having a career year with the Chicago Bears, even though the team offensively was real pedestrian, only 18th in offense, but but Adam Gase had his time coming as a head coach since the Denver Broncos days, 2013-2014, when the Denver Broncos under Peyton Manning and, and Adam Gase tutelage had the record for most points in the NFL, so his time was coming. And his time came with the Miami Dolphins. Made the, made the playoffs the first year. Miami Dolphins started off 1-4. and four, Went on a six-game winning streak. Ended up 10-6. and six, Making the playoffs. Ultimately losing to the Pittsburgh Steelers 30-12 to 12 in the wild card. Adam Gase. The Adam Gase effect. Two years fast forward. All of a sudden, he gets fired. For whatever reasons. He gets fired because... He had too much control of the rest of the organization and he couldn't focus on coaching. He got fired because uh, he didn't know when his best defensive player was getting subbed out of the game in the crucial moments of the game because he was so focused on offense and so focused with his eyes and his playbook. Or Ryan Tannehill was just hurt too damn much and he had to play with backups like uh, Brock Osweiler. He had to deal with certain backups. So he didn't have the, the quarterback in talent to take the Miami Dolphins over the hump. Whatever the reason you want to give Adam Gase, he was ultimately fired from the Miami Dolphins and ultimately hired by the New York Jets because the New York Jets was thinking about his offensive prowess. Because the New York Jets was thinking about uh, Adam Gase Adam Gase as a as a, 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 a offensive firepower of a, of an offensive guru because of what he did with Denver because of what he did with the Chicago Bears the Adam Gase effect is is largely grown and ho- 
maneuvering right now over the rest of the AFC East. And now the Miami Dolphins are now, because of this Adam Gase effect, are in a rebuilding mode. Right? Brian Flores. Shout out Brian Flores, man, from Brooklyn, from Brownsville. Uh, African-American head coach getting this head coaching gig to hope to rebuild the Miami Dolphins franchise, to hope to rebuild the Miami Dolphins organization. Maybe he, Brian Flores, maybe he could change the stigma of, of New England coaching and New England coaches when they leave the New England Patriots organization and ultimately fail in that their other destination. Maybe Brian Flores can be the guy to be successful when he leaves the New England Patriots. But I know one thing, <laughs> he has a hell of a tall task bring, bringing in Ryan Fitzpatrick. They traded for Josh Rosen. They have Christian Wilkins as the first round pick that they can that they can lean on. They didn't have much of a draft besides Christian Wilkins because they didn't have the draft picks to work with because of the Josh Rosen trade. Shout out Christian Wilkins, by the way. He's being trained by my, my homeboy, my childhood friend, Dolo, Dolo's Fitness. Shout out Dolo's Fitness. Shout out what he's doing. He's doing all, uh, uh, great things. He's doing awesome things. And, and he's being trained, Christian Wilkins, right now by an uh, ultimate competitor in himself and Dolo. So shout out what's going on there. But the Miami Dolphins are definitely in a rebuilding season or rebuilding seasons and they hope Brian Flores can come and change around that uh, Miami Dolphins team that Adam Gase has ruined uh, sooner rather than later. We're going to see what happens with that team but I don't think as far as being in contention, as far as being in, in, in any competitive any real competitive talks, I don't think we're going to start to take the Miami Dolphins seriously until after year one. Right now, the Miami Dolphins are being looked at by the, by the New York Jets and by the Buffalo Bills as, hey, in order for us to make the playoffs, in order for us to do what we have to do, we have to sweep the Miami Dolphins. And that's how they're being looked at this year. And if they, if they surprise people and do more than that, and win a few more ball games and be as be a little more competitive than a lot of us think they will be, then that would be a winning season in its own right for Brian Flores. But I think he has a lot of work on his hands. It's going to be interesting to see how these three quarterbacks, Josh Rosen, Sam Donald, Josh Allen, the same draft, pick number three, pick number seven, pick number ten, all in the same division. That's why I, I, I enjoyed. I was excited. I clapped and cheered the Miami Dolphins. And I applaud them for uh, uh, applaud them for making that move. Making that trade. Because now I get to see all three of these guys. That we possibly could have gotten. Any three of these teams could have gotten. Um, all play each other in the AFC East. And I get to see who's going to be the best out the bunch. Let's not forget Lamar Jackson and Baker Mayfield. They're not in the AFC East, but they're all in the AFC. And we all going to have to run into each other at some point <laughs> to get where we have to go. So it's definitely going to be an interesting battle with this quarterback class, the 2018 quarterback draft prospects. Moving on to the New York Jets. The New York Jets... They worry me a little bit. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. They worry me a little bit. I, I understand the Adam Gase effect. I believe Adam Gase was, was a detriment to his own success. I believe the Miami Dolphins organization gave him way too much control. Way too much power. I don't understand what the Miami Dolphins was thinking given Adam Gase all this realms, all this reign, all this power to make all these executive de de uh, executive decisions, and he's not an executive guy. Uh, do what got you hired. <laughs> Referring back to last week, Adam Gase was doing a lot of stuff 
well above his pay grade and his ego and personality and attitude didn't match and didn't mesh with the executive decisions that he have he had to make and i believe ultimately that's what ruined the miami dolphins team that's what ruined the miami dolphins organization in terms of 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 being with adam gase as a head coach moving on to the new york jets the new york jets didn't give adam gase all this reign they didn't give adam gase all this power they like look we understand what happened in Miami. <laughs> you had way too much control in Miami. All that control is not you. It's like, it's like Tom Thibodeau getting all the control and all the power of the Minnesota Timberwolves. What the hell did Tom Thibodeau do? What the hell did he accomplish to deserve all this damn control and all this damn power. And ultimately that didn't work. And I believe that Adam Gase and the Miami Dolphins organization uh, didn't work. And couldn't, and couldn't sustain a successful marriage because he had too much damn control. New York Jets, he's the head coach. He's going to do what he has uh, that's gotten him hired and be an offensive coordinator and call plays. And he can just worry about all the, all the experience he has to deal with in-game. They just hired a new uh, general manager after firing Mike McCagan, uh, excuse me. <clears throat> and now all Adam Gase has to do is head coach. One thing Mike McCagan did do before he got fired from the New York Jets was spend a lot of money on on above average players spent a lot of money on a running back in Le'Veon Bell I I think it's too much money I haven't seen Le'Veon Bell play in over two years uh, Le'Veon Bell has reached that that age threshold where a lot of execs and a lot of experts talk about where running backs start to come on a decline but at the same time <laughs> Le'Veon Bell was one of the best all-purpose backs in the game before leaving. And to add a Le'Veon Bell, just the name alone to come to a New York franchise is big. It's box office. And if he's the Le'Veon Bell of all, it's it could be scary. It could be really scary on what they can do. They added Le'Veon Bell to go with Jamison Crowder, an excellent slot receiver. I think that if he could stay healthy... He has, he doesn't have the elite speed, but he has that short area burst and he has that elusiveness and quickness to do a lot of good things in the slot to go along with Robbie Anderson and, and uh, uh, Quincy, Quincy and Nunwa. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of durability issues, but if they can stay healthy, they can do some things. They went ahead in the draft and, and added a, and added a Quinnen Williams. Quinnen Williams is... Possibly one of the best defensive linemen in the draft. We're talking about a guy who runs a 4'8", who's 6'3", 300 pounds, and that's a sideline to sideline guy. You add him with the offensive, the defensive lineman they already have <clears throat> with Henry Anderson, Harry Anderson. You add a Ja'Kai Polite. You add a C.J. Mosley. You have a Jamal Adams on the back end. And all of a sudden, you can see why the New York Jets added and implemented uh, Adam Gase. You can see why the New York Jets went out and got uh, and got the, uh, the head coach that they got in Greg Williams. It's going to be interesting to see how Greg Williams implements the 3-4 system. I understand he's a head coach, but it's, he's, a, he's a coach. He's a head football coach, or was a head football coach, and is a defensive coordinator. But we know Greg Williams as a 4-3 defensive coordinator. He says he's going to keep that 3 the three, four schematics that he had with the New York Jets. He doesn't want to change the personnel. It's going to be interesting how he coaches those three, four schematics. That three, four scheme being that he's a four, three guy. But do the New York Jets have the talent? Do the New York Jets have, have the roster to make things happen, to compete? And definitely compete against the Buffalo Bills? I really think so. And we're going to see the, the steps that they're their quarterback take as well with Sam Darnold. We don't know uh, what's going to happen with Sam Darnold from year one to year two, just like we don't know what's going to happen with Josh Allen from year one to year two. But if we have to go by year one alone 
and just look at what we've seen in game, we've seen some some great things from Sam Donald. We've seen some great throws from Sam Donald, particularly against our Buffalo Bills. So if he can continue to progress, he can possibly be the guy that Troy Aikman talked about. He could possibly be the guy that Colin Hurd been bragging about before he got drafted. He can possibly be that guy. And if he's that guy, then <laughs> the New York Jets definitely have something on their hands. We're going to see what happens with that brass, that organization under Adam Gase. But all he has to worry about is coaching that team, getting that team prepared on Sundays. He has a de- decent coaching staff around him. We're going to see what happens with, uh, I think he has his his brother on board, somebody real fiery, somebody real edgy. I know they have a real edgy, fiery coaching staff. So we're going to see how that develops in the Ryan the, the Adam Gase era with the New York Jets. And last but not least, of course, our Buffalo Bills. Our Buffalo Bills are, are an ascending team. Our Buffalo Bills are taking them steps in the right direction. We hope Josh Allen could be the guy. We've seen his his dual threat abilities in some games. We want him to be able to throw the ball more. We want him to be able to throw the ball more accurate and and use his arm more than his legs. But don't ignore his legs when the time presents itself. And we hope Josh Allen can be that guy. I think that if he can progress in year two, he doesn't have to progress like a Patrick Mahomes MVP year two. But if he can progress... Kind of like a, a Mitchell Trubisky uh, progressed with the Chicago Bears in year two. If he can progress and take those type of, of a, a ascending uh, progressions, then it's possible that Josh Allen can lead us to the playoffs this year. Because it doesn't matter how much talent we added on both sides of the ball. We're only as good as our quarterback. We're only as good as our, our quarterback will take us in Josh Allen. Nevertheless... We did make a lot of moves to try to help Josh Allen be that guy that we think he can be. We made moves along that offensive line with Cody, with Cody Ford and Quentin Spann and Ladarian Waddle and uh, Ty Nasecki and Mitch Morse. We made necessary moves adding the Devin Singletary with LaShawn McCoy and getting the TJ Yeldon. We made necessary moves at receiver. We made necessary moves uh, at the cornerback position. Uh, What do we need to take another step? A lot of people would argue that we took the steps in the right direction, but we didn't take no, no, no giant steps yet, people will argue. We didn't make that splash signing yet, people will argue. People want to see uh, a more a complete receiver. People want to see us go ahead and get a star. At receiver, people want to see us go ahead and get a star at defensive end that can be disruptive, like a Khalil Mack or like a Von Miller that can go ahead and get his own sacks, whether he's double teamed or not. And I think that that's what the Buffalo Bills, at least the fans, that's what the fans think the Buffalo Bills are lacking. Am I right? That stud receiver, that stud DE. We don't know about our quarterback yet. Uh, we don't know about our tight end yet, so I, I, won't, I can't put them in those categories. Um, not knowing and not being something is two different things. I don't know if Josh Allen is the guy yet. Right now, I'm going to pencil him in as the guy <laughs> because uh, obviously he is the guy. He's in year two, and we hope that he can continue to be the guy in year three and year four and so forth and so, and, and so on. Uh, we don't want to have... Uh, any doubt in my, our mind at the end of this year if if we need a quarterback. Damn, Josh Allen looked like shit. Do we need another quarterback this year? Do we need another quarterback? We, if we have any type of, of, of issues like that, then the Buffalo Bills brass, the Buffalo Bills organization is in trouble. But hopefully we made some right decisions and all we do, all we need to do to, to take that next step towards playoff contention is add some stars. But we don't know if we have stars until this season is played. Once again, if you heard my show last week, EP2 of, of The Blueprint, we have a lot of ascending players. And hopefully, maybe it's possible <laughs> that we have an, an, an ascending star 
on this Buffalo Bills team right now. Hopefully, Zay Jones can step up and be that star wide receiver. Hopefully, Robert Forster can step up and be that star wide receiver. Hopefully, Ed Oliver can come in as a rookie and be that terror on the defensive line. Hopefully. It's a lot of hopefuls. And those hopefuls are going to get questioned and answered in this upcoming 2019 season. We're definitely going to see. But right now, the AFC East, besides the New York Patriots, is definitely up for grabs. New York Jets, Buffalo Bills. Who can possibly edge out a 9-7, 10-6 record? We hope it is our squad. But the New York Jets are going to have something to say about that. AFC edition of The Blueprint. I'm your host, A. Rich, Akeem Richens. Next week, we'll get more specific once again about our Buffalo Bills team. But it's always necessary to talk about what's going on around us, right? And I think this was a good one. I really appreciate y'all. A. Rich, Akeem Richens. Till next time.